Hey guys, Meryl here. So today we're going to be talking about phase 6 best items for Fury Warriors in Classic WoW and how they stack up and compare versus TBC pre-raid. So without further ado, let's get into it. So some classic items are actually so good that they're only replaced in raids. And I'm going to recommend a bunch of different items from quest rewards to dungeon drops to crafted items, but we're also going to be looking at the cost benefit ratio that these items provide. So if, for instance, there's an item that's the very best, but, you know, it's extremely difficult to get or costs a lot, then it might be worth it to get the second option, which gives you about as good of a performance, but doesn't cost you time or money or sanity. And I'd also like to add that this is my very first video, so it's going to be a little bit rough around the edges. And so if you have any feedback or comments, please feel free to leave it down below and I'll definitely read it. Just like in Classic, we have requirements for raids, such as 6% hit. In TBC, you will also have those. Except that in TBC, percentage points are gone, so we don't have critical percentage or hit percentage. Instead, we have rating. And we need a minimum of 95 rating with 3 out of 3 in the precision talent to not miss our special attacks on bosses. We also need to have Expertise. Expertise replaces Weapon Scale from Classic, and being Expertise cap is our second biggest priority right after getting hit. Lastly, I want to touch on gems really quickly. Usually the socket bonuses are not really worth it this early in the game, and so we're gonna be basically socketing everything with either plus 8 strength or plus 6 strength gems. Now, it is a small difference between those just on an individual basis, but when you consider all of the slots that you're going to use, I would really recommend going with the plus 8 strength ones, unless you're extremely cash strapped. So, starting with helmets. Now, first in Classic we have the Lionheart Helm. Every single warrior has one of these, or you could be using Endless Rage, or you could be using the 2.5, or even 2P's rank 10. But it doesn't really matter though, just because the options in TBC just blow it out of the water. Now, my personal choice would be the Overlord's Helmet of Second Sight. It comes from a quest in Shadowmoon Valley, and it gives you 22 Stam, 29 Strength, 3 Sockets, 13 Hit Rating, and 24 Critical Strike Rating. Now, I've also listed the Helmet of Claw that comes from Steam Vault's quest, and the Wasteworker Helm, which comes from a heroic OHF, which is a pain in the ass. And you could go for those, however, they require a meta socket to actually be good. And it's unlikely that these meta sockets are going to be available at the beginning of the game or cheap. I would honestly just go for the Overlord's Time with a Second Sight until you can get the money to get a meta socket, and then you might be able to use one of the other two options, which are way more offensive, but again, lack in survivability. Next are a pretty straightforward choice. The best in slot is the Storm Rage's Talisman of Seething, or you could also be using the Barb Choker, but it doesn't really matter honestly. Natasha's Choker is just very easily attainable from a quest in Blade's Edge Mountains, and there's no reason to pick it up on your way to 70. Shoulders are interesting. I mean, you definitely have Conquerors by now, and you probably have the Xenoar Signet of Might on it, which gives it an extra 30 attack power. And the reason why I'm including the enchants here, and I didn't include it in the Helmon, or and I will not be including it in future items, is that the TBC Shoulder Enchant actually comes from Exalted Aldor or Scry Reputation, and that's going to take a very long time for you to get. The first option I would recommend are the Doomplate Shoulder Guards. These come from Heroic Underbog, which is not that difficult of a Heroic. And they give you 19 Strength, 22 Stam, 20 Critical Strike Rating, and a 2-step bonus that gives you 35 Hit Rating, which is honestly just amazing. Now, you could also go with the Rage Seal, which are crafted, but might not be at the beginning of the game. Or, you could go with the Waste Walker Shoulder Pads, which come from Heroic OHF, and as I said, Heroic OHF is very annoying. So I would definitely just stick with Conquerors until I have the Doomplate Shoulder Guards and enough to use the two-piece Doomplate set. Now, the back slot to me is one of the most interesting comparisons that we have in this video. In Classic, we could be either using the Shroud of Dominion or the Cloak of the Fallen God. Both are very good, however, Cloak of the Fallen God really is boosted by Kings and by ZG buff, and we're obviously not going to have ZG buff in TBC. So with that being said, let's compare Shroud of Dominion to Vengeance Trap. Vengeance Trap is one of the best cloaks for warriors until tier 6, and the only difference between them 
is a little bit of attack power, 8 critical strike rating, and a socket which admittedly adds 8 strength and 2 hit rating, making it a very very good DPS cloak. However, it costs a ridiculous 10 Shadow Cloth and 14 Primal Errors, which are going to be incredibly expensive, as well as a Primal Never, which you only get from Heroic Dungeons and everyone is going to be looking for, and you're going to use in items that are much more important for you. So with that being said, would I really craft Vengeance Trap like straight away in TBC? Absolutely not. I would probably craft it later if I didn't get the Cloak of the Pit Stalker, which comes from McFerradon, or the Black Iron Battle Cloak that comes from Doomwalker, which is a world boss, and if you've had to deal with those in Classic, you know how absolutely horrid that's going to be to get. So all in all, if you can get Shroud of the Minion, definitely do get it. You're going to use it for a very long time, at least until you have excess money to make Vengeance Trap, or until you're lucky enough to get the Cloak of the Pit Stalker, which is a Raid Drop. If you have any of the other two cloaks, however, then you're just going to be able to replace them with Cloak of the Insider, which drops from normal Shadow Labs. For chests, we have the Plated Abomination Ribcage, or you could be using the Goose Skin Tunic, or the Conqueror's Breastplate, all are pretty valid options. And on the other side, we have the Doomplate Chest Guard. Now, it's really good. 30 strength, 27 stem, 3 sockets, 19 critical strike rating, and the aforementioned uh, hit rating increase with the 2 set. However, you're trading 11 hit rating for 9 strength and 9 critical strike rating. And while I think that's actually a, definitely a worthwhile trade, uh, this is also an item from Heroic Architress, which means you not only need to do the Architress Attunement, but you also need to get the Shatar Wrap to get inside the dungeon. Needless to say, it's going to take you a while to get there, and you're definitely going to be using Plated Abomination for a while, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if you stepped into Karazhan with the Plated Abomination Ribcage. If I didn't have the Plated Abomination Ribcage, however, I would definitely just go with the Chestplate of a Doll. Uh, it comes actually from the quest that attunes you to Architras, so you're gonna get it anyways. Rage Steel is a decent option, but it's crafted, meaning it's gonna cost you money, and I don't see being better than Chestplate of a Doll, or at least not by that much. So honestly, I wouldn't really bother with it. And Chest Card of Exile, people are gonna try to sell you on this, it's definitely not bad. But I probably wouldn't buy it, just because, one, you don't have the money, and it's really just not that worth it. If you get it, just try and sell it to someone. Bracers also offer a very interesting comparison. I'm not going to read every stat, but let's just compare the Risk Guards of Vengeance from Anub and Nax to the Black Felsu Bracers, which are your best pre-raid best option in TBC. You're missing out on 2 Strength, 5 Stam, and 8 Critical Strike Rating. Now, the difference here is that Black Felsu costs 15 Primo Shadows and an Everett to craft. And not only that, this is actually a world recipe uh, drop, so if you don't get it yourself, you might have to tip a pretty hefty amount to get these made. In my opinion, it makes absolutely no sense when you're cash strapped at the beginning of the expansion to craft these. I would just happily use the Risk Cards of Vengeance, honestly, until the Hiking Malgo ones, which are actually a very significant upgrade. Now, if you don't have the Risk Guards of Vengeance, if you have any of the other options, you could go with the Nightfall Risk Guards that come from Heroic OHF, which again, is extremely annoying and in my opinion, one of the most difficult heroics in the, in, in the whole expansion. They're also best for a very long time for rogues and other classes, so you're going to have a lot of competition for these. If you still can, I would honestly just save yourself time and sanity and grab the Risk Guards of Vengeance and you can just rock them until you get the Blade Spire Warbands from Hiking Mulgar. For gloves, the only ones really worth talking about are the Gauntlets of Annihilation from Cthulhu, since they're above anything else that we can get in Classic. In TBC, however, we have the Duplicate Gauntlets that we can also use. So if you're comparing those two, you're getting 20 strength overall if you use the Doom Plate, but you're also losing out on 15 critical strike rating and 11 hit rating. And I mean, this is a side grade or a slight upgrade if you need a two the two-piece bonus, in my opinion. But not only that, these are actually from Heroic Blood Furnace, which in my opinion is one of the most difficult heroics in the game, so good luck on that. In that case, your first real big upgrade would actually come from raids, and either the Grips of Deafness from Karazhan and Fresh, which give you expertise, or the Gauntlets of Martial Perfection from Grohl himself. Needless to say, you're going to be using the Gauntlets of Annihilation for a very long time. Moving on to belts, you have two options, either the Girdle of the Mentor or Onslaught Girdle, you know, one of which you probably have since Phase 1. 
But it doesn't really matter because in TBC we get the Death Forge Girdle. It drops from Shetak Hall as normal. So it's really, really easy to get. Slap two 8 strength gems in there and you're set until Karazhan. For legs, the leg plates of Carnage are very good, but we gotta talk about the Cleft of Hide leggings. These are very easily attainable. They come from a quest in Blades Edge Mountains. They offer a super good mix of stats, hit, and the god set of expertise. It's honestly a no-brainer. Um, I honestly don't even know why I put Fell Lever here. I guess if you're somehow expertise cap, uh, you might want to go for Fell Lever. But since we're discussing pre-raid Biss, it's very unlikely that you'll be. Just go with the Cleft Huff and enjoy your new skirt. Now, for boots, there's not really much to discuss. Hopefully you've had these uh, since BWL. But if not, you probably have either the Fallen Hero or Slime Kickers. But either way, it doesn't really matter because uh, you're getting the Shatari Rockeries from a quest. And that's an extra 20 strength versus 10 hit rating on Chromatic, which is a pretty big upgrade. There's no reason to pass on those. Technically, Fell Ever Boots are better raw DPS wise, but they offer absolutely nothing in terms of survivability and they are crafted, which means it's going to take money. So craft them and use them at your own risk. The ring slot is another really interesting one, actually. We can see that there's honestly not a huge difference between Ben of Unnatural Forces and Shafars. Uh, 6 extra crit rating, 9 extra hit rating, but 12 last AP. All in all, probably a side grade. Except that Shafars is actually not easily attainable at all. Uh, it comes from a very, very long quest in Everstorm, which requires a specific person to eventually have the item to summon the boss in Heroic Mana Tombs, which is your. So I highly recommend that you get Band of Unnatural Forces, as you're going to use it well into Karazhan for sure. The second ring you're going to be using is Shapeshifter Signet, which you can get from her Exalted Lower City. Lucky for us, it's actually a relatively easy item to acquire. Lower City will most likely be the very first reputation that you're going to be exalted with. So you can get it as soon as possible and you're going to be set. Any of your other rings though are going to be replaced by either Overseers or Kylan Signet, both of which come from Quest and Everstorm. So you can just use those while you work on your first two choices. For ranged weapons, this is actually kind of a no-brainer. Mama's Insurance is a pretty incredible ranged weapon that comes from a quest in Everstorm. Uh, just get it and don't look back. It's uh, definitely better than any of the options we have from Classic. If you're lacking the hit somehow, I guess you might want to go for the Fell Seal Whisper Knives. But those are crafted and not really worth the money in my opinion. Now, trinkets are rough. Uh, as we can see, there's a lot of choices in Classic and there's actually quite a few choices in TBC as well. But I'm going to limit myself and say that Mark of the Champion is going to be the best trinket versus dem demons and undeads, unless the fights in TBC are very, very short, which I honestly highly doubt. But I'd also like to point out just how close Slayer's Crest is to Bloodless Brooch. The difference is that only of 8 static attack power and 18 active attack power, which is hardly game breaking. It's even crazier when you compare the fact that Bloodless Brooch requires 41 badges of justice, which only drop from heroic dungeons. So you're gonna farm heroics for a very long time before you get that one. So for the other trinkets, the comparisons get muddier and muddier really fast. Because which one is better depends on a bunch of different scenarios. Whether it's a single target fight or a cleave fight, what the armor of the boss is, what the fight length is, and so on and so forth. So I'm actually planning on releasing a trinket deep dive video comparing all the trinkets in very different scenarios. So if you think you'd like to see that, please leave a comment down below and I'll get to it. Finally, for offhands, the long story short here is that anything from Nax is basically on par with the non-crafted weapons that you get in dungeons. I mean, let's just compare the Hungry and Cold, which is by far the best offhand in Classic, to the Fell Edge Battle Axe. You're gaining 13.4 DPS, 1 red socket, 21 critical strike rating, and 14 hit rating. Yes, you're losing expertise, but there's no way that outweighs all of those stat gains. Likewise, for the Vindicator brand, it's a 81.2 DPS weapon with 19 hit rating and 39 attack power, which just blows Hunger and Gold out of the water. And this is precisely why I kept saying that we really need to consider the cost of items, because we really need to do anything and everything in our power to get those crafted and reputation weapons as soon as possible, since they're miles ahead of anything that we can get in Classic. That being said though, if you have THC, you're really not replacing it until the crafted or the reputation reward weapons. If you have the other items, you could easily go into Karazhan with them as well and not be at a tremendous disadvantage, but 
I would say that you should probably try and get Latros if you have those, uh, since it's a pretty good upgrade. So my recommendation here is really go for the crafted items as soon as you can, or for the Vindicator's brand, you know, buy the items for rep if you need to, because they're going to be a massive DPS increase. I would also like to mention that we don't really know if we're going to be on patch 2.0 or 2.4 when TBC Classic launches. So it might be possible to have two of the Drake Fist Hammer uh, equipped because on patch 2.0, it's a main hand only item. Patch 2.4, it becomes a one handed item. So depending on the patch that we get, we might be able to use two times Drake Fist Hammer. And in that case, we would be using those over the Fellage Battle Axe and the, Vic and the Vindicator's brand as well. The story repeats here for Mayhands. So Gresso is a clear winner versus anything that's not a crafted weapon, a rep reward, or comes from a heroic dungeon. Uh, but I really do want to highlight how just ridiculous Strikefus Hammer is. Uh, this is really what we've been saving all of our money for, and it should honestly be your number two priority right after you get your flying mount. It is the single biggest DPS increase that you're going to get from gear. And you'll notice that I didn't even really include the crafted axes for orcs, and that's just how good Drakefist Hammer is. Despite losing the expertise bonus, it still comes out on top as the better weapon. We're only going to be sure of this when we get the sensor TBC, but I would be extremely surprised if the expertise from the axe outweighs this insane proc. Options include the Blade Fist, which is very good, but comes from Shattered Hall's Heroic, which is actually one of the most difficult dungeons in, Hero in TBC. Um, if I had the option, I would just invest on getting my older rep up, but honestly, just spend your gold on getting the mass for Drakefist Hammer. It's going to be much better in the long run. Blink Strike is also very good, but how good exactly depends on the proc rate, and since we don't know that yet, I would just recommend going for the Vindicators or Blade Fist if you don't have the gold. Similarly, for two-handed weapons, you really want to focus on getting your crafted weapon as soon as possible. Now, the difference between arms and fury is that as arms, you really don't have a choice. You really need to go swords or bust, just due to how good sword spec is and how it interacts with wind fury. I would strongly encourage that you get the Lionheart Blade crafted as soon as possible, obviously, since it's miles ahead of Might of Menafil. If you're rushing for Karazhan, though, I guess the Corrupted Ashbringer is acceptable. Though it's just really far from ideal. And if you don't have the money to craft a Lionheart Blade right away, I would focus on farming the Quantum Blade out of Heroic Black Morass. That's it for the video guys, thank you so much for sticking it out, and if you have any thoughts or comments or feedback, please leave it down below and I will promise I'll get to it. Uh, if you like the content and you want to see more of it, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and I promise I'll bring in more informative content geared towards DPS Warriors and TBC. Thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.